Good morning, everyone. Before I begin, I have a question for you. Is this glass half full? Raise your hand if you think so. Well, for the pessimists in the audience, I understand. Isn't it really easy to be a glass half empty person in the world today? As children, we know we will inherit the problems of global warming and climate change, which promise to be defining problems for this century. Zooming in a bit, it has been almost two years since the war between Russia and Ukraine. And just recently, in the last couple of months, the Middle East exploded again, where humanity is the biggest casualty. Closer to home, even if we wanted to, it is impossible to forget the persistent problem of pollution. On the other hand, if we were to view the glass half full, the discrepancy between different demographics of age, class, and sex are slowly disappearing. And global life expectancy has increased massively. People live on average 30 to 40 years longer than they did a century ago. And yes, while there have been many localized conflicts, we haven't had a world war in 70 plus years. And despite many challenges and hardships, the world seems to have navigated a pandemic. Whether we zoom into Gurgaon or zoom out across the globe, look at the last few years or the many decades past, the question is, how do we make sense of this? And how can we be happy in our lives? This was a question that intrigued me. Is it personal or is it genetic? Is it transient? Does money really buy happiness? Or is it just as popular cartoon character from Mowgli, Balu had said, is it all about the simple bare necessities of life? The research does seem to suggest that there are genetic and health drivers to happiness. And researchers do say that money does lead to happiness, but only up to a certain point, after which it gets capped. But don't worry, I am not going to bore you with published research. Chat GPT can summarize that for us. Instead, I would like to have a conversation based on my observations, reflections, and learnings about unlocking the secrets of happiness. Now, I'll tell you three vignettes of different archetypes and what I took, in, took away from them. First and foremost, I have a 13-year-old brother, someone who knows his mind, obstinate really, and has the confidence of an early teenager. He didn't handle COVID well. He was too young and had too much energy to be disciplined about online school missed his friends solely, and found refuge in food and online games. In the last couple of years, he's a changed person. Played cricket earlier, and now plays basketball like a maniac, happily filling many of his empty hours with a bounce and a dribble. There are others with whom he debates endlessly, a circle of close friends who seem to be a genuine source of joy for him. They are tight-knit and don't seem to be faced by the opinions of others. Of course, all of us here are children who are privileged. However, my sense is that the happiness he and his friends get from their daily doses of exuberant interactions far exceeds what they get from vacations and other privileges. Moving on, my dad is a planner. I think he enjoys planning a vacation as much as the actual vacation 
Not that he takes money. Doesn't that seem boring? Well, not for him. He's generally immersed with his work and has worked as hard as high school kids. Harder, in fact, and seems to enjoy that, which I would think is impossible. His friends, many of whom go back decades, grew up in a resource-constrained India. They studied, worked hard, leveraged the solid foundations of middle-class values and were the beneficiaries of the economic liberalization of India. They seem to have purpose, which gives them equanimity and balance. And arguably, that is worth more than happiness. Another interesting perspective is that our impatience of youth needs to be tempered by the measure of happiness, not in hours, days, or weeks, but rather over months, years, and decades. Last but not the least, my third vignette is about my nana, my maternal grandfather and his generation. They have steered through absolutely massive social, political, economic, and technological changes in India and the world over the last many decades. They have demonstrated tremendous resilience as they tackled personal problems of deteriorating health, a declining circle of family and friends, and the loneliness of old age. However, their joie de vivre would rival those of their grandchildren. Their infectious enthusiasm for the varied flavors of life seem as yummy as the mangoes and parathas of their reminiscences. As I've thought about these three vignettes, five things have become clearer in my mind about unlocking the secrets of happiness. The first is finding purpose, or ikigai, the Japanese secret to unlocking a full and meaningful life. This seems to enable individuals to look beyond immediate challenges to a nobler mission of life. The second is resilience. Suffer me dhup to hogi. It is impractical to believe otherwise. Having the strength and conviction to continue to push through seems to be the other side of the coin of having purpose. The third, and a very important one for a social media conscious generation, is to have an internal locus of control. Being sensitive to and others is important, but losing yourself because of superficial reactions is not. In the same way, Deep connections with family and friends seem to be a common theme. And it is very much the quality rather than the quantity that is important here. Going back to Balu, finding pleasure in the simple joys of everyday life is oxygen. For all of these five factors, it is about having a view across time horizons. Some, like connections and simple joys, are daily occurrences, while others, like purpose and resilience, are long wave factors. Based on my observations about happiness across generations, I have learned three things. The first, reflect on your learnings from the previous chapter, whether it be soul crushing disappointments or short bursts of happiness. Next, recenter. Forget about that horrible exam. Go out with your friends. Celebrate the deadline you just made. Acknowledge that you succeeded because of your efforts and supporting factors. But when you fail, acknowledge that you failed despite your efforts and uncontrollable variables. Finally, re energize. Recognize that only a few chapters have been written and the remaining are still blank pages. In my perspective, 
Happiness is an ongoing cycle of reflection, re-centering, and re-energizing. Thank you.